Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Over It podcast. I'm your co-host, Christanne Kershaw, and I'm joined by Suzanne Kulberg. Thank you Hello. yet again, Suze, for turning <laughs> up <laughs> to our podcast. Thanks for having and... me on my show. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, we're so funny. Uh, well, I love our sense of humour. Hopefully others do too. <laughs> um, today's episode... We're talking about what happens between Christmas and New Year. Don't let a slip become a slide. When we've just been talking about this topic, I think this is going to be relevant to so many people because how many of us sit and go, what day of the week is this? What? what, Huh? What? And it's even funnier because we're at the end of 2022 and Christmas was actually on a Sunday. Now, I don't know about you, Suze, but so many times in my past, it's like, oh, it's Christmas today. It feels like Sunday. It just seems like that Sunday feel, but it really is this year. So now it's like, oh, hang on. What day are we? What? Huh? Still there. It's so funny you should say that because in the week leading up to Christmas, we were away. We went away on a family holiday and I rang my sister on Christmas Eve because she's literally just started a brand new job. And I was like, are you at work today? And she's like, Suzanne, it's a Saturday. I was like, oh, <laughs> So I literally did not know what day it was. And yeah, Christmas Eve was a Saturday because as you said, Christmas on a Sunday. So, and now in the post Christmas time, it's still that kind of slot of, I don't know what day it is. I don't know what year it is. I don't know what's happening. Do we have mail? Are the shops open? Yeah. And then, and then what do you call it? Hot cross buns are out. I'm like, what on earth is that about? Like, no, we won't derail down that side tangent, but seriously, I was like, oh my goodness, Christmas is well and and truly over now, people. Easter is in April this year. That's four months worth of hot cross buns. I I agree, let's not sidetrack too much, but just for a pause for a minute. Hang on. How many, uh, on the topic though of the slip becoming a slide, how many people are getting uncoupled in this kind of already disconnected kind of weird time because of commercial stuff like that? Easter isn't for four months. Like there's so many external I noticed, uh, again, not every country will celebrate this, but certainly in Australia, we have Boxing Day. And one of our biggest sales of the year, as far as commercial stuff goes, is Boxing Day. There was Boxing Day sales sales starting three days before Christmas. Oh, that irritated me so much. I had a whole rant to a friend this morning on Voxer because, yeah, in Australia, we have Boxing Day. I don't believe they have it in the US, but if you're a US listener, please let us know. And I know they have it in in Canada because it was a Canadian friend I was talking to. And I said, in days of old, (laughs) like before the internet and everything, Boxing Day sales were the thing because we didn't have Black Friday in Australia. So I remember getting up at like 6 a.m., maybe even earlier, to be lining up outside the shop to get the special of the year. And now, as you said, the Boxing Day sales start in the week leading up to Christmas. The Black Friday sale is like not just a day, it's like a month. And it's like it's become so commercial and so detached and so I, I don't I just I don't find the joy in it anymore. Uh, no. And it was funny, the only thing Casimir wanted I should take a photo of it later. He wanted to decorate his room with lights. And I said, well, if we wait till after Christmas, this is Suzanne the uh, frugal, (laughs) they'll mark down the excess Christmas lights and then we can just put it up there, call it a fairy room and be done. So that's what, while while you and I are recording this, the the chance for me to be child-free is because Casimir is decorating his room with fairy lights and (laughs) Xanthi's reading a new book I just bought her so she takes after me. So this is how I can get recording done in the between Christmas and New Year period. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so to me, when we talk about any of these things, Easter suddenly being promoted and we've not even finished 2022 and sales and whatever, again, I agree, it's been a bit of a shift over time. I still remember going to Maya, one of our big department stores when I lived in Perth and I've lived in Queensland for well over 25 years now, I think. Oh no, we just celebrated the 25th anniversary recently. So it's been a while, but we used to go and it was like, elbow room only and it was a big thing to go into the city where Maya was and anyway that but you knew what you wanted and it was for that one thing or to get some cheap Christmas wrapping paper for the next year or or whatever it might be whereas now there's a whole lot of marketing bombarding us of do we need those things are we and making us feel really inadequate and I think that can lead to little slips that we have around Christmas New Year turning into a big slide into 
undermining do we really know what we're doing do we need to be skinnier or smarter or faster or whatever like undermining completely our own self-belief and is there any wonder that we end up with uh new year's resolutions to drop stuff in the pantry and get fitter and stronger and whatever because we've got this constant bombardment how are we really feeling personally at any given point in time you don't get time to stop and think about that a lot of the time. I love that. And I also love the back to the context because you brought it back to when a slip becomes a slide. So often we get so caught up on what happens in the week between Christmas and New Year, but we discount what happens in the weeks between New Year's and Christmas. Like it's mm-hmm. one week of the year that so many of us are either, as you said, what day is it? What time is it? What is there to eat? How long can I eat these Christmas leftovers before, you know, I might risk food poisoning or maybe that's just in our household. (laughs) But it's kind of like there's so much pressure and then you're not really enjoying yourself because there's the guilt and the shame and the mental pressure that you're putting yourself under but then you're not actually actively achieving anything because you're like, well, what's the point? And it just becomes this limbo time. And it's, it's really a time I encourage people to pause and reflect. Like it was funny. I was chatting to somebody while I was on holiday. (laughs) Susan's on holiday, still talking work. This is how I roll people. But we were talking about end of year reflections and end of year um, preparations and, and ceremony and ritual And a lot of people are starting their end of year reviews like in October, like once again, you Mm -hmm. and I were talking about that Easter's not till April and people are promoting that now. People are like, we're rounding out their 2022 back in October. And I was like, we still had three months to go. Um, And even now we still have a few days to go. I'm not saying hustle will go hard. I don't subscribe to that either. But sometimes I think we... We don't ever really be now. And I know there's a a saying, I don't know who it's originally attributed to, but Heather Tobin told me this. So if you're listening, shout out to you, love. She's like, if you've got one foot in the past and one foot in the future, you're pissing on the present. I just love that so much because it was like, we aren't actually here. So in this time, like what I would encourage so the slip doesn't become the slide. If you want something to do, have a look at all you've achieved this year. And they don't have to be the numbers is in, the clothing size, the scale, the amount in the bank, like whatever. What are the little things that you've achieved that are actually in recollection, the big things? We were, before we hit record, chatting about how we launched this podcast with so much love and very little perfection. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And we're working Mm -hmm. it out as we go. But that was a big thing. So I don't know for you, I don't think you'd had it on your wish list as long as I had, but I'd had starting my podcast on my list for like four years. And then December wasn't the ideal time to launch people. We, we nearly held it to next year because we were looking at stats and numbers. And then we're like, hang on, we're not to practice what we preach. We're the over it duo. So let's just do it now. But how mm-hmm. many things do you hold off for some form of perfection that is a slide that you don't ever even want to go on? Like where we stayed, there was these water slides at this holiday we're at. And one of them was particularly steep. I've turned it into a reel. If you want to look at my Facebook, Xanthi's on there. Casimir refused to get on it. But um, Xanthi absolutely loved it. And I think she did about 50 turns. Um, But like what what can be the little thing that can become the big thing rather than waiting? Well, I can't do this because like what what is a goal do you think most people would have? Like starting a podcast, writing a book, there's probably a lot, but what would be most people? It'd be something like losing weight or money saving. Which one do you want to workshop, Christian? I think even maybe food related, whether it's, um, you know, losing weight or getting a cleaner diet or something around that kind of thing. Oh, let's pick, let's pick. Okay. So for anyone listening, if there's something you want to clean up about your diet, like you want to drink less coffee, mm. you want to eat less chocolate, you want to insert your thing of choice here. And we'd love it if you guys are listening and you have questions or you have suggestions, we can totally revisit this in another episode. So say, for example, you currently drink 10 cups of coffee a day and your thought is come January 1, coffee's never going to grace my lips again. And I've never been a coffee drinker, but I can so say this with chocolate. And then you're like, as soon as you have a slip, like you have a bit of coffee, like I know with chocolate, 
um, the number of times I've given up chocolate. And then I'd be like, well, does it count if it's a chocolate chip biscuit? Does it count if it's <laughs> chocolate in the ice cream? Does it count if it's a topping? Like we, the, the amount of overthinking we do with this is quite dramatic. Mm-hmm. So say you're like, I'm never going to have coffee again, but then somebody gives you like, I don't know, an eclair and it's got a coffee filling or something. That could be your slip. Then does it become the slide? But also too, why do we need to go so extreme? If you're drinking 10 cups of coffee a day and then you go cold turkey, your body's going to have a whole lot of physiological response to that because the body has adapted to it. If you mm-hmm. started from none and started drinking 10 cups of coffee a day, you would also have a physiological <laughs> response to it. So instead of going come January 1, coffee's never going to grace my lips again, what if you kind of looked at when you were drinking it and go, okay, I'm going to stop at 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. or something you know, effectively cutting out one or two cups, get that under your belt and then add the next one so that you don't, because how many people, and, you know, be honest, I've I've never, I've never successfully kept a New Year's resolution, not ever, because there's such a pass fail. It's such a binary. And as soon as you have one thing, like I've blown it now, and then what does February become the new January? So what have you got to add, Christian? I can see something turning. <laughs> well, I, I completely agree. Like it doesn't have to be black and white. So another example with the coffee is a great, great example is instead of having a bigger cup of coffee, can you three quarters fill it? So you're still having, because part of it is the, you now I don't have a cup here. So for those wanting to see the video, you'll see entertaining <laughs> visuals. I, I've, but... got, I've got a cup. I always have a cup. So... World's greatest greatest. girlfriend. Someone's asked me about this the other day. My husband bought me this. So this mug is 20 years old and it's very special to me. (laughs) Um, But yes, for visual effect, what am I doing with the cup now? So imagine that's been filled three times a day, 10 times a day. It doesn't matter. But if you've been filling that cup and then you start to three quarters fill it Mm. and you still have that, it's the often the the routine of sitting The first taste is often the... The drink, the put, you know, you feel your, imagine your body just going, <sighs> but you just don't feel it as full. I love that. And then with time, you reduce what that is and maybe you get to the, what is it, espresso, the smaller A cup little size. shot thing, yeah. Yeah. And you reduce it, your body is not going to get anywhere near the hit and that can be applied to everything. What can you just scale back? A tiny little bit so you're not depriving yourself you're not changing the messaging system in your body dramatically in one go that becomes much more sustainable you're also less likely that if you have a bit of a, a bigger day where you go out to a cafe and you get a bigger cup oh well you know whatever yeah, that's it might a slip be. but not necessarily a slide and the other thing too exactly. it's deconditioning unconditioning reconditioning i don't know some sort of repatterning of our thought process because i know with chocolate this is this has been my kryptonite my achilles heel it's it's kind of like if i buy a family block i will eat a family block hands down the end end of story but then when i buy a smaller one i'm like well it's not as efficient like it's so much cheaper (laughs) per gram to buy the bigger one it's like yeah but then you're going to eat the bigger one so i can imagine Mm -hmm. with the coffee the good thing about a coffee or a, a, a liquid drink that you're pouring in how much you have so with the chocolate, maybe instead of buying a family size, to start with then like a king size block because that's still decent. I think a family mm-hmm. size, I don't know, they're always changing it. But if you went from a family size to a king size to a regular size to the big Freddo size to the small Freddo size to, you know, whatever, um, yep. and then either out of sight, out of mind, like I know how many people say, well, I know where it is, but literally if it's in a dark container up that I need to get on a stool or somewhere. So it's not literally, if if I open the fridge and I see junk, I will eat it. But if it's in a pantry at the back that I actually have a bit of effort, most of the time mm-hmm. I do forget about it. So I think sometimes, you know, and then people are like, oh, it's calling to me. And it's like it initially, but it's funny how this lessens over time because mm-hmm. then, and, as, and I, I'm sure, as you said, it's that first sip, that first bite or that first taste, that's the thing. I think it's because our body slows down. We take a breath. And often it's not actually the food or the drink or anything that we're craving more than the actual break from what we were doing beforehand. Exactly. And 
I certainly have seen that over time of those who drink coffee, those who drink alcohol, those who smoke. It's not just whatever the thing is that the body is addicted to. It's the moment of, it's the, I'm removing myself from another situation. It's whatever else. So if you can find a way to just adjust a little bit of that at a time, you can often then start to look at the situation that's leading to you feeling that you need that coffee or that chocolate or that alcohol or that cigarette. It doesn't soft drink. It could be so many things. Anything. There's anything. Yeah. Because I was just say soft just drinks sugar. Might, one of my um things, and I do have it, but I don't have a lot. Like it's usually just that sip or two, and that's. It takes the edge off. I have that feeling. I enjoy that. And then the rest of it, I, I turf away. And in the beginning, it was really hard. But mm. now it's like, I still like it. I still have it. But I used to drink like two bottles, like 1.25 litre bottles a day, and then one bottle, and then two cans, and then one can. And now I have, I'll open a can every other day, take a couple of sips, feel like satiated by that. And I've got the the touch of it, but then I don't actually like that much more. So yeah. it's really interesting how your body adjusts. And then, but then in times of stress or anxiety, or, you know, when things coming up, you can go back to habits because that neural pathway is still there. The Sue's who drank mm-hmm. two 1.25 liter bottles, and ate two family box of chocolate a day. He's still there. It's wired in very quite uh, strong Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not that you, uh, that's not necessarily a slide, like for anybody Mm -hmm. listening, sometimes like I always go back or I always do this and we beat ourselves up for me now, a great reframe is it's like, where am I not taking care of myself? What needs Mm -hmm. to be addressed here and see that as a signal to move back to the goals that take me forward rather than using as evidence that I can't make changes. It's like, cause I have, and anyone listening, you have, you've made changes in your life. And it's not that you can't stick to them. It's that likely something else has come up that we're not wanting to pay attention to. So we shove it down with food or alcohol or drink or gambling or whatever it is. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I love the example that you shared with the soft drink. My husband and I did similar with soft drink. It would be 20 years ago now. And so what we ended up doing is we got a soda stream. And so hubby was more both of us drank soft drink there there was not just one or the other of us but we switched to I think sugar-free ones and but then with time I've learned the different ins and outs of both and he recognized that he really liked the bubbles it was actually Mm. the sensation of the cold bubbly water and so with time we actually got soda stream because we didn't like all the bottles we didn't like um all the other stuff in it so we bought a soda stream and we got the syrup things and so we could just put a little bit of the syrup and bubbly water and we started with a, a normal amount that they recommend and then gradually we used less and less and then gradually he just went actually I just like the soda water so for most of the last certainly since we've had kids so 16 years he's mainly had soda water and for a while if I was having anything bubbly I was like "Mm, I'll have lemonade and I, I didn't with time didn't like the sweet taste anywhere near as much so then I would put some soda water in with the lemonade and yes and so on and then as interestingly once I got onto the mineral side of things I didn't crave the sugar as much and I liked the bubbly. So now I will just drink quite happily cold bubbly water because that's what my taste buds, they like the cold, they like the bubbles and probably the slightly acidic drink that the bubbly thing gives. But there you go. And that was just a gradual thing. I think that's fascinating too because it's finding what you like about it and then because the thing is I've never liked substitution for the point of substitution. Like people are like, oh, just yeah. swap it. And it's like, but if it doesn't give you the same hit, feel, taste, I don't know about you, but I'll eat my way around the kitchen then have the thing I wanted anyway. So, but when you're looking at, and it was interesting because we've just got back from being away and I did drink more soft drink than I normally would. And part of me mm-hmm. was like, well, you know, holiday mode, like, was it that? But it didn't feel like that. It, like, cause I didn't, I'm not like that now. Like I used to be holiday or no holds barred. But what I forgot yep. was I forgot to take the stuff to make the yucky juice. So the body is looking for the stuff in an unhealthy way. And now that we're home and I've gone straight back onto it, I haven't felt like the soft drink. So it's, it's interesting how sometimes we beat ourselves up for the things that we crave 
but there's something in there that the body's after, as you said, like minerals. And we'll do a whole episode on this, I'm sure, at some stage. But yeah. like, and what is it about that? So like with for, with me for chocolate, it's that first taste and it's the smooth texture. Like I really mm-hmm. like that smooth texture. But for other people, you know, there's there's all sorts of things. And what is it about that? And And identifying it. And the other thing too, when slip becomes a slide, slight tangent, but we were talking before we hit record. I walk every day. We've just been away for a week and I haven't been doing my morning walk, though we were on the third floor of somewhere with no lift. So I got plenty of incidents. There There was lots (laughs) of stairs, but I was out for my walk. I was actually messaging Christian. I was saying, it's only been a week. Cardio goes fast. But I could have been like, and this did cross my mind. I woke up and I was like, I can't bother going for a walk. I'll just wait till New Year's. And I was like, hang on, you've got to practice what you preach. Get out of bed, woman. Um, I probably didn't walk for as far as I normally would. But it was just the habit of keeping that up and going for that morning work and getting back into that routine so that that mm-hmm. slip up of dropping that walk doesn't become a slide and then it becomes so much harder to get back into it. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's the other thing that I wanted to bring up. We can have a slip and then a slide into a bad habit or we can have a slip and a slide out of it what we feel is a good habit. So a lot of the time in the work that I do, people might spend much of the year building up routines when it comes to including the minerals and including the yucky juice, which we definitely will do a yucky juice focused episode soon. It's on the list. It's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> so otherwise known as adrenal cocktail, for those who have not heard of the yucky juice thing, we will explain on a later episode. But an adren- adrenal cocktail is a healthy electrolyte drink that can help you to feel more resilient and just does a lot of good stuff. I'll put the link in the show notes. I'll make a note to do that right now. Awesome. Thank you. And so you might be doing one thing. You might be doing 10 things that all relate to supporting some good health habit. doesn't even have to be part of the root cause protocol that I'm uh, specifically talking to. But then you don't have the normal cues that would happen in your day-to-day routine or you don't have say normally it's because you're going to work that you remember to do something or because you're not eating certain foods, you don't remember to have certain things included. It doesn't really matter what the thing is. It's about what can I do? Oh, okay, I've had some slip-ups during this Christmas, New Year kind of time. Will that become a slide where you just completely get out of that routine like Suze's walk? Or will you go, oh, well, I've remembered it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and I'd normally do it at 8 o'clock. I'll just do it now. Mm. Or will you set an alarm or some reminder to do it if you really prefer? Sometimes people prefer to do it earlier in the day or later in the day or whatever. If you've missed that time when you really prefer to do it and you've got a reason not to do it later in the day, do what can you do to help you remind the next day when you would normally do it? And I love see that. if that can help. And I love how you've highlighted that in home or at home in your normal routine, you might have a trigger for that. Whereas when you're away and you're out of your your normal routine, that trigger is not there. So how can you include it? An alarm is a great idea. Or how could you alter it? So like when I was away, I could have, and it'd be something I've in future actually done some active lots of the stairs though the stairwell was not air conditioned and Queensland is a lot hotter than New South Wales so maybe not (laughs) um done some active laps of the pool instead of just playing in the pool but like where could you substitute it that you're getting that need met in another way um Mm -hmm. one habit I did keep up while I was away which I was proud of is I took my journal so I journaled Mm -hmm. while I was away not in the same way like at home I'd wake up and do it and on holiday was a bit different but like how can you not let the slip become a slide as you said in the good habit that you formed Or um, if you're consciously going to do it, that when you're back home, you're like, okay, this is it. Like the walk this morning, instead of entertaining the part of my brain that was like, no, no, we can just wait. It's like, no, this is what we do when we're at home. And noticing that it's totally normal. We all have the part of our brain. It's like, oh, just stay in bed or just one day won't hurt or all this sort of stuff. It doesn't mean that our habit isn't the right habit because what we can do then is start thinking and overthinking and Googling, well, perhaps I need to be doing something else and and. That is just bullshit mental drama, people. Leave that aside. Pick up the habit and in whatever small way, go for it. Get back into whatever you can. Grab that little thread. So a good example with the exercise is I normally walk my dogs three times a week-ish. 
And that's often on a Monday, a Thursday and a Saturday. Well, they did get a Saturday and they actually were exhausted by a little puppy play date. It was so cute. And poor dog, mind you, Taffy especially, was just passed out for the whole day and you could barely nudge her awake. She was exhausted. Um, but I didn't go Monday morning because it's like Boxing Day morning. We had, I think the kids were still asleep and we were awake, but it was like, eh. There, there was not motivation to do anything early. Anyway, I got to maybe five o'clock in the afternoon. There was a cool breeze and other things were done and we'd had a bit of this time and that time. And yesterday was a no technology day for my youngest. So I'm like, right, we're going for a walk. You want to come? Oh, yeah, there's a bit of a mopey thing. She was half interested, half not. And you know what? We went and we did, I think it was a 4.2K walk. In oh, the end, decent. with a stop off at the dog park, yeah, and the the at the dog park, there's a playground, so she was able to do a bit of playing as well. So you know what? And was it suboptimal in some ways? Yeah, the dogs decided they wanted to be challenges yesterday and were barking at other dogs, going off their nut. I'm like, this is why you're booked into obedience in January. But anyway, that's it's a whole happening. I'm excited. Yes, it's I've got a slot and I booked that in. So for the uh, three-year-old rescue dog that needs some extra help and for the person who's had dogs for a very long time but has one that has stumped her, we both need some training. I love so, how you said we both, like mm. side tangent, but sometimes it, we can be like it's their fault, whether it be our pet or our parents or our kids or our neighbours or whoever else. And it's kind of like, no, this is something we can both work on. I think that frame changes so many things. Oh, so much. And this dog, she's so smart. And she, I know she's got some sort of training. I think she's worked animals before. She's been an active farm dog. I don't know what her cues are for some of that. And she gets so excited to see other dogs, but she barks with the most shrill, most horrendous yappy she's a working dog so it's loud it's really loud and even in a big dog park I can tell you it reverberates around and yesterday trying to calm her and this other lady had this beautiful five-month-old puppy and then my second dog was bouncing off the first one and they were just then we could where you kind of look left and right and be like oh whose dogs are they I don't know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes and then my youngest was trying to get the the black one who was running around I intentionally I could see and sense that there was something off two days before or whatever it was three days before they'd played perfectly two days they'd played beautifully with this other dog but he was a bit bigger a bit older and they could just run it off and burn it off and be fine I sensed that this other dog would have been overwhelmed by that and that my two was so energizer bunny ish anyway it was not fun, but you know what? We got there in the end. We made it as positive for everybody as we could and we moved on. And in the past, I've caught myself getting really, grr, grr, you know, that was a really stressful walk and whatever. And I didn't stay there, which is a big change for me because I've had dogs for so long now. I normally know what to do. And like I said, this rescue dog muffin, she has me stumped. So I'm going back to school, (laughs) doggy obedience school, to learn some things with her and hopefully that will make our walking experience a little bit more more positive. So we old dog new tricks, both of us. (laughs) And just one other thing before we we round out this episode, thinking about slips and slides and this is the time of year between Christmas and New Year where many of us are contemplating changes whether or not we subscribe to New Year's resolutions, New Year's, New You, all that sort of thing. But it is a time of reflection. And I just want to encourage anyone, the the, the change of the page to January 1st is literally just a change in a calendar. And if that holds some great meaning for you, then by all means, go with that. But I know for me and for many of the people I've worked with, it can be a lot of pressure. So I'd be encouraging you not to put a great amount of pressure on yourself, like spend this time these days looking at, okay, what are the things that I want to change? I want to, as we were talking about, maybe drink less coffee, eat less chocolate. And it could be things you want to reduce, or it could be things that you want to increase. Like I want to um, look at my minerals. I want to introduce uh, 
adrenal cocktail or two, or I want to go for a walk or I want to do some journaling, whatever it is, like look at the things and then be honest with yourself. You're not suddenly going to make wake up January one with this level of <laughs> a lot of, I, was, I saw this meme and I shared it. A lot of my plans result in me having a level of determination, motivation, and willpower that I've never once <laughs> displayed in my entire life. Like <laughs> be honest with yourself about, okay, this is where I'm starting from. This is where I want to go. And what are the steps that I can break down? Because if say you want to have a walking, so say if you imagine a year from now, it's the same time that you're listening to this in 2023 and I want to do all these things. I want to be walking every day or six days out of seven. I want to be journaling. I want to be whatever it is. How can you break that down into small sustainable things? Because if you currently, we'll go back to the coffee example, drinking 10 cups of coffee a day, if you dropped one per month, then next, this time next year, you could be coffee free. As opposed to, I'm not going to let coffee touch my lips come January 1. By January 4, be so unpleasant to be around that your partner is shoving coughing at you. Go, please just drink some. I don't want to live with you anymore. She says, having had this experience when I tried to go carb free, um, my husband was literally throwing bread at me going, just eat something, please. I don't want to be with you anymore. <laughs> And then going up and down and up and down and this time next year, probably drinking more coffee than ever. Like if it took a year, imagine, but it was truly done. The habit was formed or released. How would your life be different as opposed to a week or a month of hell where you just throw in the towel anyway? And how could that be? Because like I released 78 kilograms over a period of three years. Once it was done, the time didn't matter because you got there however long it took, like, you know, think of something in your life that you have achieved. Like another one's like having children. Like when you get pregnant, you know, that it's going to take likely nine months, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but you know, around that period of time, but you don't go, well, today I'm growing a foot or today we're forming <laughs> eyelids or whatever. Like your body knows what to do. You just kind of along for the ride in whatever habit you're creating or dismantling. If you go about it with like pregnant mum energy, it's amazing what you can achieve instead of having this pressure of having to do it on January one, never that, you know, never more and then collapsing. Yep. Absolutely. It's little habits and along with the little habit changes might come little mindset changes, which then feed back to other future uh, habit and mindset changes, which are sustainable. I think that's key you're not going to change overnight, but you can look like the mineral side of things. It took me two years to really implement a lot of the mineral stuff, but now it's second nature. And even my teenagers pretty consistently, they're not perfect. What is perfection anyway? But they consistently do what we ask because they know they feel better. And that didn't happen overnight. And I see people that are frustrated because, you know, whatever age child doesn't want to have this or that. Just do something smaller, break it down into a littler step. It's sustainable that way. And I also and I love that too. As you said, when you feel better, you do better because you know you yeah. feel better, it becomes a second nature choice. Yes, I could have this ice cream at 10 p.m., but then I'm gonna be buzzed on sugar. I'm not gonna sleep very well, and tomorrow I'm gonna have like a sugar hangover. Mm -hmm. Instead of, well, because tomorrow I'm never ever gonna eat sugar again, I've got to eat as much as I can today. Like that mindset has got us all into the all or nothing habit, which just doesn't work. And yeah. the other thing that you were saying, like when you introduce these things and notice that you start to feel better, when it's slow, you don't have the body reaction when you go instantly cold turkey on, you know, caffeine or chocolate or whatever. Yeah. Um, the body then readjusts to it. And then, as I said, begins to crave it. We forgot the stuff when we're away. And yeah, I, I, Suzanne's like, part of me is like, why don't you just go to the shop and buy some more? Like it wouldn't have been that hard. But, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, just a week and, and whatever. But, you know, you your body you do notice that differences and then you the compensation that happens as I said with a soft drink instead of being like oh I'm terrible it's like oh well no wonder because I wasn't getting this met in this way so the body was craving it and then I was interpreting those cravings because that's the other thing too sometimes our body the way we interpret the craving what we're getting from that isn't actually the thing it's something else so that could be a whole other thing we could discuss because I, I find it fascinating. Say that's yes. a whole episode. We will add that to the list because. What do your cravings really mean? <laughs> it's a thing. It really, I've got personal examples and I'm sure Sue's between us. We could give some direct examples of 
our body craves certain things, but we don't necessarily consciously know what what the body is needing. So from a bio, biochemistry point of view, I can explain some concepts and just a lot of us second guess ourselves. Now, I'm not saying to go and eat tons of ice cream just because your body craves the ice cream, but there can be a reason why you're craving anything. Take note, literally write it down in a journal, write down what's going on in that day or whatever has been happening the last couple of days. If you haven't regularly been noting it down, you'll probably find there's a pattern to it. Sometimes it's hormonal, sometimes it's a stress response, but it may not be, okay, something stressful happened today. So tonight I'm feeling like I need to eat whatever. And that delay can actually really confuse the messaging. So the more we trust our body to give us the signals for a reason and know that our body has an innate both healing and innate drive for certain nutrients, the rest becomes easier with time. But again, we'll come back to that on another yeah, day. Yeah, I love it. On that, I think it's time to wrap up. And before we do, I just wanted to flip over to you because why wait is open for registrations at the, at the moment. Now, you may be listening to this episode at some other point in time when it's not, but soon enough it will be, or there may, may be registrations when you're listening to this, but it may not be starting for a little while. So is, how can Why Wait make a difference for someone who's in that kind of what everything we've been talking about today? What can, what can being in a group program like Why Wait do to help? That's a great question. So Why Wait is my 10-week group coaching program aimed to take people from one day <laughs> to today. And so many of us think, oh, I'll wait till after the kids go back to school, after Christmas, after birthday, after Easter, after. If you're looking for a reason to wait, people, you're always going to find one, hence the name of the program. And it's about getting shit done that you want to get done. Why wait is not a prescription. It's not like here is the things I'm going to tell you what to eat, how to exercise, how to move, what habits, what to journal about. No, no, no. Because we all know that shit doesn't work. We all have different bodies, different metabolisms, different goals, different families, different situations. Like we have people in the program from around the world. We have different careers. Like if you're a shift worker or if you're a doula, we have a doula currently and like her patterns and stuff, like she was talking the other day about delivering a baby or being present and delivering on Christmas day. Like the thing is no program is going to fit your circumstance exactly. And I think that's why so many of us go from thing to thing to thing. What why wait will do is meet you where you're at and say, okay, so what are your intentions? What are the changes that you're craving that you're desiring? Um, and that's the intention. And then how can we give those intentions attention so we can actually, you know, make the time and then experiment. Because sometimes I think people have come to me, they have, they've had like bad teaching experiences, like, you know, where you go to school or maybe, you know, nutritionist, naturopath, dietitian, something like that with their mighty red pen. And it's like, what do you mean you didn't do it? Just try harder. And it's like, yeah, no, why wait? It's not like that at all. It's like, okay, I had this plan. I thought it was going to be great. And then this happened. And it's like, yeah, well, that's suboptimal. Okay. How can we tweak? Because I think so often we literally throw the baby out with the bathwater and start all over again. And we're forever digging out our foundations. That shit's exhausting, by the way. We never get the house off the ground because we're always renovating the foundations instead of, okay, I thought this would be great. Like your dog walking example is a perfect one. I normally go in the morning, um, but I couldn't because of this reason. So I'm just not going to walk the dog today. Actually, there's a breeze. I'll go in the afternoon. I don't like the afternoon. It's too busy or it's too hot. Okay, cool. So how? You know, it's all about coming back to the group checking in, but not from a kind of accountability, work harder, whip kind of way from a like, okay, this is the reality of it. And sometimes not just me, anyone else can make the littlest tweak. It's like, have you tried this? Or have you thought about this? It's like, no. And that can be your literal three feet from gold moment. I love the story of the gentleman who basically um, struck gold and bought all the equipment. And then the vein of gold dried up and he kept digging, kept digging, kept digging. He gave it up. He sold all the stuff out in the cheap and went back to do something else. The, the gentleman who bought the equipment really cheap then hired an engineer who was like, hey, this is where you should dig. Three feet from where the other guy gave up found like this giant gold thing. So I kind of think of myself as the engineer in this analogy, which is hilarious because I'm not, but my husband is, who's like, you come back and go, hey, Suze, this is what happened. 
And it's like, well, let's just kind of go this way a bit and then you can find your goal rather than chucking it all out and starting again and again and again. So that's what we do in Why Wait. It's absolutely fabulous. Kicking off again, 23rd of January. But depending on when you listen to this, I tend to run it four times a year. So there will be a round coming up. But if you're interested, what I encourage you is to literally embrace the why wait and sign up today. Even if you're like, oh, it starts in January, it starts in February. Starts... No, 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 no. Know that you're in, get that out of the way. Then as soon as you're in, you'll get the dates, you'll get the calendar. Start making the space for this now. Because so often yeah. when we join something and then it's like, oh, I just don't have time for this or space or capacity. And we spend the first half of the program spinning out. No, 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 no. join now then look at, okay, here's when the calls are, here's what I can attend. And if you can't attend live, here's where I'm going to make the space to listen to it and make the space for this in your life so that you can start doing the things that you actually want to do rather than waiting for one day or next time, next round. (laughs) Absolutely. Waiting for that perfect everything to align that may never align and all the things. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that. We will see, well, hear from hopefully people as they like this. So please rate it. Please give us comments and thoughts as to what you liked about this episode. You're more than welcome to reach out. Contact details are going to be wherever you've uh, consumed this podcast. There will be information about how to contact us. And we look forward to you joining us in future episodes. Thank you, everyone. Bye for now. Bye.